Hello folks, welcome to another clip here on my YouTube channel. Before we get started with uh, today's topic, uh, that's the Henry Hub gas future and a little bit of uh, comparing that one with uh, the Dutch TTF gas futures in Europe. And um, of course, before we get started with the chart technical part, I would like to introduce that channel again and to simply emphasize you to just leave some thumbs up and to just have a click at the red button here at the YouTube platform to be a member of it. It's absolutely free. Uh, feel free to join, of course, and again, feel free to leave some thumbs up. Very much appreciated if you do so. All right, let's have a look at the chart technical part of the Henry Hub right now. All right, folks, let's have a look at the chart technical picture. In front of us, we got the uh, Henry Hub future. So that's the Henry Hub natural gas. And uh, the development, as you can see, there is that yellow line right here, vertical line, uh, symbolizing the 20th of November 2020. So the whole period we observe is a two year period here. So we see something like a price movement because this is the only way just just to compare that kind of a natural gas price from the US with a natural gas price uh, from the leading contract in Europe, the Dutch TTF natural gas futures um, being trading at the intercontinental exchange. You will have a couple of informations there if you like. And so that's the only way to compare that because uh, of course, because of the product sp specifications, so-called product specs, you will find a different different units, of course, a million British terminal units in the Henry Hub and um, the megawatt in the Dutch TTF gas futures. So the only way to compare it is the move and the price move. And uh, simply uh, absolutely, absolutely easy to see that, uh, that the price move from a, a level of 260 to 70 right here up the road in direction to that kind of a almost 10 US dollars level uh, at the peak in uh, at almost the middle to the end of August 2020 um, is nothing like uh, 10 times or 20 times the price as we as we saw that stuff uh, at the Dutch TTF natural gas futures. If you just simply uh, check out the website from the Intercontinental Exchange and you will simply add that kind of a contract Dutch TTF natural gas futures and you will simply add that two years period, you will simply find out that um, the, the period of that kind of November November 20, 2020, uh, was around 15, 15 euros a megawatt and going up in direction that peak uh, situation in August, uh, August 25, August 26, going up to that almost 350 euros. So that would be the same point we have here. So that kind of a move in the European gas futures uh, came 10, 20 times the price and and more is it's absolutely crazy it's insane and it shows a lot of uh, the problems we face in the eurozone and it shows a lot of the problems it faces with production costs and future production costs of course that kind of a price came down lately and we are just hovering around right now between the 110 and 115 uh, the last the last weeks but if you just check that out in the three month perspective or intraday perspective, whatever you do, uh, the, 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 the possibility to check out where the prices are maybe moving in the next month to come is simply uh, having a look at the so-called forward curve. So all you can do is simply have a look at the specs and at the, at the contracts and, and see that, for example, the Dutch TDF contracts from January 23 uh, up to, let's say, uh, June 23 or July 23 and even going in direction August and so on further down the road is moving between 115 and 117 118 euros a megawatt so that's almost pancaking flatlining around so there's something like this price price level should be uh, at this place so no big issues right now from that kind of uh, from that kind of uh, uh, way of, of observing it but still and I repeat that still it is a price movement from 15 to 100, 120 right now. And this is nothing like only doubling prices or a tripling prices. It is almost in direction of a 10 times price for the Eurozone from that kind of a period uh, until today. So that brings us to the conclusion that it is far more 
far more cheap to produce stuff, energy related stuff in the US than doing that in the Eurozone. This has a lot to do with foreign exchange movements. It has a lot to do with GDP. It has a lot to do with equity markets in the foreseeable future because the less products and stuff is produced in the Eurozone because it's simply too expensive. It's too energy reliant. And, and the more European companies or German companies or French companies, Italian, Italian or Spanish or whatever companies are, yeah, let's say, exporting employment in direction to the US or China, that simply means deindustrialization in Germany and deindustrialization in the Eurozone countries, less industrialization, and bringing that to the US. So you tell me who is the winner of that one, and you tell me who is the loser. And it doesn't look that we are the winners here, and the Eurozone is, is the winner. So simply by, 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 by comparing that kind of, yeah, let's say, gas prices here, and you can, of course, do stuff with other commodities, energy aligned commodities. And of course, don't forget the game of carbon taxes in all that kind of uh, move. The same in the Eurozone, of course. Don't forget about everything, everything like uh, the trouble with ESG. So that ESG play is not easy at all because it makes it yeah, let's say um, less favor favorable for banks and, and uh, to just to finance oil and gas companies. So it makes it less less easy. It makes it far more difficult to be financing new pro new new production facilities and a new expo a new exploration um, um, in uh, oil and gas uh, for that kind of companies just because it is uh, far more in brackets dirty. Um, to finance that because you have possibilities to have far more negative points on your own ESG scoring um, regarding a bank. So a lot of things come together and I uh, simply wanted to draw your attention on that kind of point today. And in the long run, in the long run, it doesn't look like it doesn't look like this will have, uh, have a really positive effects to the Eurozone economy. And um, I simply think it is far from the road that we will be reaching price levels that we've seen one or two years ago. We won't get there anytime and we won't get there anymore, I guess. So this is just a point, having a look at economic data, GDP projections, and combining that with a price move of one very important commodity, and that's natural gas. You can do that, of course, on top with prices like WTI or Brent crude, so oil. And you can do that on top with uh, fuel prices in Europe, comparing them with fuel prices with the States and all that stuff. And you will bring it to an end and will find your same conclusion like we had here. It is far more cheaper uh, to have all this kind of energy reliant business in the US. So just a point and bring that up in combination with Euro US dollar, in combination with the GDP projections in the next foreseeable future, six to 12 months. So that is far more easy to, to explain something uh, out there that uh, the US might scratch the recession or even avoid recession, but the Eurozone will definitely end up in recession and um, mostly because they don't get that energy uh, issues done. All right. All right. Most of the things have been said in the chart technical part already. So that simply brings me up to one single point to say thank you very much for your time, for your attention. And uh, we'll be having a look at another asset class, another asset next week. And uh, of course, I would like to emphasize you again to be a member of this channel. Just have a click at the red button and see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye bye.